Well, hello everybody. It is Wednesday, and that means it's time for another episode of What's Up Wednesday, um, where we bring to you our weekly news and ruminations of what's gone on this week, what we hope will go on this week, and just kind of reach out and say hey to everybody. So we'll start off with a hey. I'm Roman Chavon, again, 321 Kiteboarding, and uh, this is What's Up Wednesday, episode number two. Uh, got some notes, got all prepared for this for you. So um, basically, one of the things uh, I, I want to talk about was kiteboarding goals. Um, and that may sound real scary, like, oh, it's kiteboarding, it's supposed to be fun. I don't want to have goals. That's what I do at work and at home and at school. Uh, but really what it comes down to is progression, you know, learning how to learn. And uh, as a shop employee and as an instructor, we tend to sometimes do more teaching than we do riding. And when we do ride, we just want to get out and, and kind of do our own thing. But we also want to progress with the tricks and the goals that, uh, that we set out for ourselves. So one of the things that I've learned over the years is it's really easy to have those tricks that you want to work on, uh, but you go out, you talk with all your friends as you're setting up, you get out because you're in a rush, you, the wind's good, and you get out there and you just kind of start doing your own thing, you know, riding back and forth, doing those jumps or you know whatever it is that you always do when you go kiteboarding. But for me, when I want to learn a new trick or when I want to reinforce maybe a trick that I already know but on my not so good side, I tend to make sure that I do that within the first 30 minutes of my riding. So my goal is usually to go ride for the first 30 minutes. I'm going to just do my tricks that I've been working on. I'm gonna crash a lot, I'm gonna swear a lot probably, drink a lot of water, but I'm going to get better at what I'm doing and I'm not gonna be tired. So I found that if I save all the hard stuff to do at the end of my session or at the middle of my session, after I've warmed up or whatever it is, I tend not to do it. So I'll do one trick, I'll crash, and I'll say, yeah, that's it, I'm gonna go back to my riding back and forth, jumping. So kiteboarding goals the tricks you want to do, the things you want to do in life, do them first. Uh, so I do those in the first 30 minutes of my session. Kind of goes with life too. Do the hardest thing first, is that what they say? Um, so one of the things that uh, I love to bring to you guys, as you can see behind me, I've got lots of toys around here. It's like living in, in toy land every day. Um, and we sometimes forget that we're used to seeing all this stuff but you might not be. So if you've never stopped in the shop, stop in. If you've never visited us online, definitely visit us online. You guys know the address. Um, but what I wanted to bring to you today was a product highlight. And uh, last episode, I brought to you just a simple uh, product highlight, but this one's more of a comparison, okay? And what it is is a very controversial product in the kiteboarding community. If you're just starting kiteboarding, you might go, man, that's a really good idea. If you've been kiteboarding a while, you're probably saying, oh man, why are you even showing them this thing? You're gonna kill these people. Well, maybe not kill you, but you get the idea. Those products are leashes, kiteboarding leashes. Uh, this particular one is called a real leash, and it kind of looks like that dog walking leash that you see people uh, going to. It's got anywhere between a seven and a 10 foot reach. And what this is used for, this attaches to your hip, like this. <clears throat> And you put this end on your board, and it keeps your board near you. So, if maybe your instructor, not us because we definitely show you, but an instructor from a different school maybe never really showed you how to do a good upwind body drag, you might need one of these. If you live in a place where your board, if it gets lost, it's lost forever, you may want one of these. If you're just starting out and you just want the security of not having to worry about your board drifting away from you, you might want one of these. But there's some downfalls. Downfall is it's big, it's bulky. People may make fun of you, but it does serve a purpose. But the downfalls are a lot. You've got this big piece of hard plastic right next to you. So you land on anything on your hip, it's gonna push into your body. Even though it has a nice padded side, it's still just added gear to put around you. The other thing is, you've got a long leash, and even though it does retract, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna get caught somewhere if your board comes off and you get trapped in this. So it's just one more line to kind of worry about. So we stock them, we carry them, you know, people ask for them, 
but it's one of those things that we kind of caution against. You know, a good upwind body drag or good you know management skills with your board are going to save you from ever having to use one of these. Now that brings me to the comparison product, and this is something that really, if you're looking at one of these, if you're if you're saying to yourself, "Holy cow, that's really cool! I already ordered one." Pause your order right now, take your shopping cart, set it to zero, and go and look for this product. This is called the Gojo by Ocean Rodeo. Uh, the Gojo is a big inflatable, let me show you this a little bit better. It's a big inflatable, I don't know, water wing, I guess. And it allows you to get your board back a lot easier. How does it do that, you may ask? Well, one of the reasons that it works is if you think about it, normally when you lose your board, it's upwind of you and you're trying to body drag upwind and you can't make it. Maybe there's waves or water or current or something like that. Well, the Gojo sits above the board. It helps keep it upright. Number one, you can see it. So if you've ever lost your board because you couldn't see it while you're body dragging, you'll know how big of a selling point that is. The other thing is the wind's actually going to push on it like a sail, so it's going to come back to you. Uh, so that's nice. So as they say here, uh, lost board, roll, and drift and recover. So it does all those things. It will roll your board back up, it will drift it back towards you, and it's a lot easier to see. So it's, it's a nice feature. So uh, about 80 bucks, $77.95 to be exact, and these go anywhere from 70 to 100 and something dollars. Um, two very plausible solutions to keep your board near you and to keep it unlost, you know, and being sold in your local pawn shop. Uh, this one, although it's a little high tech and it does keep your board right next to you, it's definitely not as safe as something like this. So, real leash versus the Gojo. Uh, 3 2 one kiteboarding gives a thumbs up to the Gojo. Oh, my gosh, technical error. It'll be okay. We just, we just had a... Uh, had a tornado and a hurricane all come through at once. Actually, we had a charging cord. Listen, man, it's a one-man show over here. Don't hold it against me. But you got to see a neat view of the shop. I think I just lost all my viewers. So that was our review and our product accessories. And uh, next up, pretty simple. It's on my list, which is down here now. All right. Is a uh, question and answer. So... Uh, I can't quite see all of you, and if you've been asking questions, it's not that I'm ignoring you, I just can't see them, um, but feel free, ask away. Uh, I'll be able to read off some questions and answers, but I did an email survey earlier and got some questions and answers from people, so it's Q&A time. Wish I had music, but I don't, so it's just Q&A time. Uh, all right, Q&A, number one. This was asked from California. What's my favorite place to kite? Uh, since this uh, question came from California, I'm gonna guess that they mean worldwide. And I've gotta tell you, my favorite place to ride so far that I've been is Cape Town, South Africa. If you want a beautiful, very inexpensive, uh, to stay anyway, the travel you know, is, 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 uh, is up there a little bit. But uh, if you want a really beautiful place to kiteboard, Cape Town, South Africa cannot be beat. Uh, I think their season is anywhere from December all the way through March and uh, bring a seven meter kite. You know, you really won't need anything bigger than a 12. Uh, I think we were on six, sevens, and eights most of the time. Great for waves. There are some flat water spots as well, and the downwinders are absolutely out of this world. Uh, so that's my favorite place to kite. Now, if the, you were talking about favorite place locally here in Cocoa Beach, I would still say the ocean. Um, we've got the famous 520 Slick just down the road, and that is a phenomenal flat water spot in any wind direction, but mainly in the north, you know, northwest wind directions. So you're just going to have butter smooth water that blows right over the causeway. Well, the wind blows over the causeway and the water is butter smooth, but you get the idea. Uh, and other than that, anything with an easterly direction, you can do 7 to 10 mile downwinders and uh, just get your fill of waves. We have really good waves year round for the most part when there's wind. And uh, bring your surfboard and, and just go to town. So my favorite thing to do is downwinder in the beach. So Cherry Down Park to 13th Street. All right, question and answer. <laughs> this was from right here in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Where did I learn to kite? So, ashamedly, I've got to tell you, I learned to kite on my own uh, here in Cocoa Beach, Florida, 
uh, right around Adams Street, I think, in, in Cape Canaveral. And um, it was one of those things that I was a surfer, not very good, um, and I would see kiteboarders come by all the time, and I just had to do it. And there was just nobody in the area that did instruction, nobody taught. And everyone that did, didn't teach during the summer. So that's when I wanted to learn, of course. So I did what every smart person does and goes onto eBay and buys a bunch of gear that doesn't exactly last and is not safe. And I learned to kite. I taught myself. Um, then I learned to become an instructor. And uh, from there, it's all history. And up to current. Uh, all right. Here is a question from Upper East Coast. <laughs> How did I learn? <laughs> That's kind of funny. So I did learn here in Cocoa Beach. I did teach myself. And the way I learned was trial and error, which I do not recommend. Um, there is just something to be said for any kind of quality uh, instruction, but high quality instruction like we provide is even better. Um, because trial and error can be fatal. It really can. Uh, I'm very surprised that I did not injure myself uh, more seriously than I did or at all. And for my last Q&A here, uh, what is cool to do in Cocoa Beach? Hmm. Uh, for those of you who have maybe haven't been to Cocoa Beach, uh, Cocoa Beach is a barrier island and we have water all around us. And it's a small town, I, I wanna say maybe 50,000 people, uh, but we do have large cities next to us and Orlando, Florida is only a, a short 40 minute drive away. Uh, but here in Cocoa Beach, there's lots to do. Um, if you are tired of the water and you don't want to stand up paddle, surf, or kiteboard, um, you can always just come to Cocoa Beach and enjoy a really chill afternoon at one of the outdoor eateries. Uh, there's plenty of uh, places to enjoy your favorite beverage, and there's live music everywhere. So uh, it's a real cool place. Plus, then if you add all the tourist stuff that we have, it becomes even better. So we've got a space center. We've got this really cool visitor center in Cape Canaveral now. You've got a whole port with Disney cruise ships and everything else. So there's really a lot to do, uh, not only for the family, but, uh, but for the kiteboarders too. Uh, so that, that brings our Q&A to an end. I do uh, thank everybody for joining me for my What's Up Wednesday. Uh, that's all I kind of had for you today. Uh, covered some some things I like about travel, and we did our product highlight. So uh, I just want to thank thank you for all the thumbs up. Uh, make sure to visit us, and if you have any questions, as always, give us a call. We're always here to answer your call. You'll usually talk to myself or any of the other staff, which you will be meeting on one of these What's Up Wednesdays, and uh, we're here to help. So call us three two one three zero two five six six three, and uh, I will see you on the water. Oh, quick. News report for the wind. It looks like we've got another great round of wind coming this weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday, with possible wind on Friday afternoon. So for all you weekend warriors out there, it's really been lining up on the weekends. And I hope to see everybody out. Uh, if you need any small kites, big kites, or sunblock, join us. And uh, we will be here to assist you in any way possible. Thank you again for joining. That was another episode of What's Up Wednesday. Roman out. <sighs> Actually, I should probably make this like a half hour show. Nah, just kidding. Go back to your day. Enjoy work.